This video demonstrates our technique of off-pump coronary artery bypass using skeletonized in situ arterial graft. Skeletonization of the right gastroepiploic artery, GEA, not only prevents vessel spasm, but also leads to GEA dilatation. It facilitates inspection and makes sequential anastomosis easy. We have invented a simple technique for harvesting skeletonized GEA. Our method of GEA skeletonization has only three technical steps. The first step is to pass thin vessel loops under GEA at 5 cm intervals. The second step is to unloop the tissue surrounding the GEA. The last step is to seal and sever all the branches together with soft tissue. A median sternotomy was extended about 5 cm caudally from the diaphragm process. Prior to harvesting ITAs, the peritoneal cavity was opened vertically and the GEA was inspected and palpated to confirm it as a suitable conduit. A small laparotomy was extended into the diaphragm in the midline to the attachment of the liver. This extension greatly facilitates the GEA harvest as well as the opcap procedure. The GEA was harvested in a skeletonized fashion using the harmonic scalpel with the coagulating sears tip. The first step of this procedure was to pass thin vessel loops under GEA at 5 cm intervals. The anterior layer of the greater omentum was incised using a cautery. Soft tissue between the GEA and its satellite vein was carefully undermined using mosquito forceps, and only the artery was encircled with a rubber vessel loop. This was carried out through the entire necessary length from the level of pyrolus. The second step was to unroof the tissue surrounding the GEA. The anterior layer of the greater omentum was divided with the harmonic scalpel coagulating sears between the vessel loops. The tissue pad jaw of the sears were inserted through the soft tissue in such a way that GEA trunk was protected from the heat during the use of harmonic scalpel. With this step, GEA was exposed throughout its entire length. When we occasionally encounter a mental thick with adipose tissue, we clear away fat around the GEA by stroking it gently with activated tip of the harmonic scalpel. The GEA gives off thin walled gastric and omental branches. The next step then was to seal and sever all the branches together with the soft tissue. By gently pulling up the vessel loop, the whole surrounding tissue were detached by coagulating sears approximately 2 mm away from the GEA. During this section, we rarely encounter bleeding from the satellite vein or any other vessels. The whole skeletonization of the GEA took 10 minutes in this case without injuring the arterial trunk.
After making sure the omentum was hemostatic, we gave intravenous heparin. The distal end of the graft was then divided and a diluted mirulinone solution was instilled in it and hemoclip was applied. The GEA was then wrapped in a papaverin soaked sponge. With these preparations, the GEA later became a maximally dilated arterial conduit. The GEA was brought anteriorly to the pylorus and the liver through the vertical incision of the diaphragm to reach the heart. The skeletonized GEA was used for the PDA and the posterolateral branch of circumflex artery. The PDA had become totally occluded. The side-to-side -side anastomosis between GEA and PDA was constructed in diamond fashion. The heart was positioned vertically. A coronary shunt of 1.5 mm was inserted. Lastly, the posterolateral branch of the circumflex artery was grafted with the end of GEA. This posterolateral branch was a previously stented large vessels, but with new severe stenosis in the proximal portion. A coronary stent of 2.0 mm was inserted after positioning the heart. The anastomosis was constructed in end-to-side fashion. All anastomoses were completed in hemodynamically stable condition with no arrhythmia. We have kept systolic blood pressure over 80 mm mercury throughout the procedure with no antropic agent nor pressure medications, nor epinephrine, hephenylephrine, or dobutamine has never been necessary in the intraoperative management of our OPCAP procedures. All anastomosis showed no bleeding. No additional suture was needed. The final graft flow assessment was performed prior to chest closure. All skeletonized arterial conduits are easily assessed by the transit time flow probe. The GEA flow was excellent, demonstrating over 100 mm per minute with a nice flow curve pattern. The, the anterior part of the diaphragm was simply closed with vicryl suture to leave adequate entrance space for the GEA root. The peritoneum was closed with the same continuous suture. The upper half of the mediastinum soft tissue was approximated. The right ITA was completely covered with the mediastinum. The early graft patency was confirmed using CT angiogram prior to discharge. 
These are three-dimensional reconstructions, the right ITA to LED, the left ITA to the first diagonal and the second diagonal branches, and the GEA to the PDA and the posterolateral branch of the circumflex artery. All graphs were proven patent. Summary We demonstrated our method of opcap using skeletonized in situ arterial grafts. Fine preparation of ITA and GEA is the most important for the high quality coronary revascularization. Our method helps to make the technique simple, secure in this technically demanding operation. We believe that OPCAV with these graft vessels provides the best possible coronary revascularization.